Hey guys, welcome back on my channel, Dorota Palitska International, new artist and educator here. And today we are going to create an absolutely amazing uh, meal. You can have a wee preview of it in here. One of my favorite techniques combined with another favorite technique and uh, this style is called a porcelain effect uh, where we will paint a one stroke and then add some gold transfer for foil detail. I hope you will really enjoy watching it. If you're new in here hit the subscribe button as there is lots of tutorials coming up and existing subscribers. Thank you so much guys for all your support. Let's start! <laughs> I've got my form apply and I'm going to show you step by step how I'm going to build up this extension uh, and then we can create this amazing design. Actually it's a really uh, nice one, a little bit more advanced but I wanted to show you something different as well. So I have apply an extra nail dehydrator and universal air bond and after that we can sculpt our nails with the fiber gel. And the color I choose is a light rose. It is a really nice uh, kind of light coverage color. I will be using my oval gel brush and starting with a nice and thin layer. So nice and thin layer and then at the free edge. So I'm always placing my product uh, at the place where the uh, natural nail joins the form. So a little bit thicker in this place. Same in the other side and we will go for a stiletto shape. I think it will look really nice for this design. So pick up enough product and then just follow the lines for the stiletto shape. And same on the other side. Don't place too much product and uh, this is only a skeleton of the nail and uh, it will be much easier to control the product if you don't have it too much. And then once you're happy with the skeleton, give it a cure. So I'm just going to cure this nail and then we can build up the apex. We'll also need some color plus so we can create a really beautiful pink for this design. I'm actually excited to create this porcelain looking uh, nail art. Absolutely amazing. Okay, now we have to build up our apex and a structure, but I'm always starting with picking up a small scoop of the product and apply it through the entire nail. So first of all, you've got little product, when you, so you can be very precise at the sides, close to the cuticle, and the product is not going to run and float your uh, client's cuticles. So always a good idea to start with the small scoop first. Obviously this is an extreme length, but I'm showing you guys on the extreme length because the extreme length is always much more difficult to do it than like a shorter nail. So now I have picked up like as large scoop of the product as possible and I'm going to apply it right in the middle of my nail, creating the apex and giving a strength to the structure. Okay, I'm working more through the middle because by the time I finish um, running through the entire nail, the product is going to get into the good places. I can just clean my brush and help it a little bit by moving it into the right place. And then once I'm happy, I can give it a cure. Okay, 
and once the new is uh, cured we can take it out and inspect if there is any other places where we want to add the product so you can see it um, got pretty good apex plenty of product at the free edge but i could add it a small amount in this uh, part here um, so i'm just picking up a small amount of the product again on my brush and apply it nice and thin layer through the entire new Again, having such a little product makes it very easy to apply it on the new. Okay, now you can see it, we've got a really nice shape. And then give it a cure. couple seconds longer and then we will be able to shape our nails so just close all your products and put them on the side so the dust doesn't hit them get some UV cleanser and then we can start shaping this nail so I'm just removing the nail form It's actually sticking really well to the tape so I have put a tiny bit of the cellar tape on my practice finger and this way the form stays on really nice and proper okay when we remove the form we have to squish it and then pull it down clean the entire new and now let's shape it so we need to get rid of any excess of the product on the sides. Same on the other side. And then bring it up. just blend everything around the cuticle area they cannot be any catchy places here right so you have to really well blend this area and now we have to smooth the entire nail but when we're using this movement, you need to remember that the nail goes like it has a C-curve. So you cannot file just in a one place. You have to go like, i show you, you have to go like this. One side, other side, one side, other side. Okay, so this way you will get a really nice and even shape everywhere. So I'm filing one side, going to the needle. Okay, in the middle, and then going into the other side. You can see already how the shape has improved. And just keep going. Uh, ideally, you want to place the finger down the way so you are not going to catch the free edge. I really want to take this needle to the extreme. So it's already starting having a nice shape. And then once I'm almost happy with it, I clean the dust and I swap to the buffer to get a really nice look. And the buffer creates scratches, so the gel is going to stick to it with no problems. Okay, 
and that's my new buff so I'm just going to clean it and we can move into the design. I'm cleaning it very well, tiny bit of the blue scrap and now let's start doing um, the design part. So I'm just going to clean my brush and we will mix um, Color Plus Red with the paint on French gel for a nice pink uh, color. Wow, this is a really beautiful pink color. <laughs> just going to mix it more. So just mixing it well. And now let's do our smile line. So we need to divide our smile line into a few different section, sections. Or actually even not, I show you the easiest way to do it. So let's paint just a one smile line. the other side distribute the product everywhere and now just perfect the smile line It don't need to be perfectly perfect because uh, we are going to use some gold foil as well. So I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Just kind of indicate where it is. Clean what I touched. <laughs> and that's the first part of the design done, so we have to give it a cure. Now I'm just going to use uh, some white with the drop of the blue. Because we need to make some background for our flower. So now imagine you've got some gold uh, transfer foil on the top and then you've got some pink part and then after this pink part we are going to paint the blue part where we will place our flower. Don't uh, make the blue too clean if that makes sense, like make it a different shades of the um, color, like so you've got some whiter parts 
some darker, so it's almost look like a sky. Okay, so all sort of different shades. A little bit bigger. And then give it a cure. You could actually use it maybe for a one stroke painting as well. So I will show you how to paint with the gels for a change. Why not? I need to just clean my brush really well from the paint because I used to use it for the acrylic paint and I had some questions like if it's possible to use the same brush for the um, for the acrylic paints and for the gel yes it is and I'm doing it as well but you have to always clean it as well and kind of like even pick up the product like so I would pick up my gel and let the brush fill the gel so it's kind of behaves to to the product changed there we are so that's my brush ready and now we are going to paint some flower actually I would need some green as well the only reason why I'm not the fan of the painting with the gels is um, because you have to cure it each layer okay so I've got some green pick up some white and we can just paint some uh, leaf very pastel color so it might be hardly visible now we have to give it a flash cure and that's what i don't like about the gels that's after each petals uh, you will need to cure it so definitely an acrylic paint is a better choice for for the one stroke okay now i have mixed my pink and we are going to paint the rose-ish flower. change the angle of the brush click uh, quickly paint another smaller one on the top and here So I can do only a top petal because the next petal needs to go on top of another same. I cannot do any more petals inside. We have to give it a cure. Yeah, I know why I don't like painting one stroke with the gel. <laughs> you can guys see the difference now as well. Um, I mean, there is lots of tutorials when I'm doing it with the acrylic paints. And now you can see the difference with the gel.
I have just added some darker color to my paint as well, just so the petals are more visible. Okay, so now I need to paint the middle of the rose. And this one is already closed. I can do one more petal on the side. So I can do any petal which is not touching the next petal. And I have to give it a cure. I think gel is fantastic for like on freehand stuff. Um, but not for a one stroke. That's it cured. Now we have to make this middle. And again, I have to cure it. So even a couple seconds, like a flash cure, the longer, the better. Okay, now I need to work more with the straight brush because I want to add a very small petal here. And here. And here. And then give it a flash cure. Once we're happy with that, we can do some outline. And to do the outline, I'm going to use the D-liner brush. So again, just clean it from the acrylic paints. I mean, it is clean, but they might be still kind of reminding of the product on it. And we are going to add just a small detail in there. So a very kind of vintage pastel -y look. Okay, very small amount of the product. And just touch up some places. A bit of detail on the leaves and then give it a cure. So once we have completed all the painting, we can move on into the next step. I'm going to apply the top coat on the entire design and this is necessary otherwise um, the inhibition layer from the gel might take some of the transfer foil and you really don't want that so apply the top coat on the entire design I think it looks fantastic like even for a wedding days Valentine's Day spring summer Lots of different times of the year. And then give it a cure. This is crucial step, like you need to apply this top coat and then we need to buff it for the next step to work. So on the side, I'm going to pick up the foil design gel. 
just a small amount of it. And then once the tip cures, we can give it a bath. Okay, that's it ready. So just buff it. And actually, um, the porcelain, like an old-fashioned porcelain plates, are amazing inspiration um, for the different looks with the flowers and the gold foil. I'm also perfecting the free edge of my stiletto. Almost there. Okay, so that's my tip all buffed. And I had also another question, can you not apply the matte top coat? Yes, you could, but I would, you will need to really clean it as well, because even if it's a matte top coat with no inhibition layer, there still might be a little bit of the inhibition layer, and then the foil might stick into some places you don't want to. Okay, so now we are going to paint this beautiful design. My brush is a bit stiff, which means it did cure a little bit. So if this happens to you as well, the best way to clean the brushes is a drop of the acrylic monomer. And monomer, monomer is really great like because it's designed to work um, with your acrylic brush, Kolinsky hairs. So it kind of dissolves the product a little bit and uh, then you can clean it really well. And get it back to shape and back to working properly. If it's really damaged brush, then you could use the uh, kind of hot water to get the bristles back to shape. Okay, now we need to make it really nice. And on the other side. Do it very slowly. Just like a kind of gold outline. I mean, it is going to be gold. <laughs> and then check if it's okay. If you need to just touch up any other places and let's paint it on the bottom as well. So leave some gap. Okay, and paint another one. Same on the other side. And then same on the bottom. So it almost looks like a wee plate. Okay, 
and then you can give it a couple of swirly beads. Now it will be a challenge to apply the transfer foil and so just fine tip. But I hope I will manage. Now the transfer foil is a technique and you really need to learn how to do it. It's not going to work by the first time. You need to try it a couple times, okay? Now I'm going to cure it at 30 seconds on a slow settings. So 30 seconds cure on slow settings and in the meantime I'm just going to prepare some uh, gold transfer foil. I will clean the back of it with the blue scrap. So back of it clean with the blue scrap. And now we can start transferring it. <clears throat> okay, I will start with this side. So I want I want to touch only the places I want to transfer, not other places which means I'm going to transfer the foil on this part, this part, and then the top part. Okay, so we've got the first part done. Now let's go into the middle. Okay, we've got the middle part done. I'm really fussy with this design, like I wanted it to be nice, that's why I'm taking the time. And I think what is nice takes short time. Okay, the longer you kind of hold the foil, but as long as you don't move it, uh, I've got the feeling it stays better then, because it has a, those 3D look, look to it. So look what I'm doing, I'm kind of gently moving my finger as well, and then do a, like a waxy movement. Okay, so this way I'm getting like a really clean look. I've got drop more to do it just on the top corner here. And then the bottom. The bottom is going to be the most extremely difficult one for me. I'm just swapping for a fresh piece of foil because I want to get a really good results. So what I need to do, I need to support this part as much as possible. And I know I wouldn't be able to go over with my finger in all places so I need to go one side and then I need to go other side otherwise I wouldn't get a nice result so one side and I have not enough pressure in the one place I can feel it there we are and then the other side so just the same I've got really good now here hold it hold it and we have got a really nice and beautiful design. Then apply the top coat for a finish it results and I show you how it looks once it's done. So a little bit more advanced design but I think it looks absolutely fantastic, beautiful, a porcelain looking nail. I show you what we have created. Okay, really nice and delicate. I hope you have guys really enjoy watching this tutorial. Glittery hacks and bye for now.